Okay. <clears throat> Fantastic. Welcome everyone to OLS4, the very, very first cohort call um, of OLS4. And we have a beautiful group of people that is fill filling up very tiny boxes on my screen because we've got so many people here today and I'm so delighted. Um, so my name is Yo Yehudi. I'm one of the co-founders and organizing team for Open Life Science. Um, with me today, I have Berenice Batu um, and Emi Tsang, who are the other co-organizers. Malvika isn't here um, on the call with us today because she's in rural, rural island and the internet says no. Uh, she is the fourth co-organizer and co-founder of um, Open Life Science, um, but she has been adding stuff to the notes, which is fabulous. Um, so uh, for those of you who've just arrived, um, this is the last time I will say this. For those of you who've just had to listen to this 100 times, please add your name to the roll call and um, add, uh, if you can, answer the icebreaker question about a song that expresses your personality or that just sounds absolutely awesome to you. Um, so when we kick off calls, we always start with just a little bit of housekeeping and information. Uh, the first thing I will ask um, when you're participating in these calls, please try and keep your microphone on mute if you're not speaking. Um, that doesn't mean you can't speak. Uh, we, we love it when you speak, um, just that we want to prevent um, your neighbor's rooster coming through or the very, very loud truck that's driving by um, or the construction works um, because many of these things happen. Um, but if it, if it does come through, it's, it's no big deal. So we, we, we may ask you to mute. Um, but whenever you want to speak, unmute, say your stuff just remute at the end. Um, let me see. Uh, so hopefully by now you have already had your first um, mentor-mentee call, um, or if not, it should be scheduled soon. Um, if anyone for any reason hasn't spoken to their mentor or mentee, please uh, let us know. Just email team at openlifeside.org and we will figure out what we can do for you. Um, so when you joined the call, you may have noticed that it said the call was live streaming. Uh, this does not mean it's going straight to YouTube. Uh, we are not being live broadcast. What it does mean is that if you click on the top left where you see live on otter.ai, uh, that we have a transcript for the call um, so that you can follow along. It's automatically guessing what we're saying based on the um, vocals, um, which just can help you follow along if your audio cuts out or for any other reason. Um, so Open Life Science has a code of conduct. We will remind you of this before every call. Uh, just very briefly, uh, the reason that we have a code of conduct is that we want everyone to feel respected and welcome um, and able to contribute and participate in our community. Um, so right now on the Etherpad that is present on line 103, there's a link to the code of conduct. Um, I would request everyone just try, go through to the code of conduct, click on it, open it in a tab, and when you can, spend a couple of minutes reading through it. It's reasonably straightforward insofar as what we're asking is be nice and respectful to one another and treat each other in the way that you would like to be treated if you are in a, in a, new, a new community or an open community. Um, most of the time, everyone is incredible, but on the off chance that something doesn't go well and you feel that you've either witnessed or experienced something that isn't in line with the code of conduct, um, then you can report that so that we can try and fix that and figure out what's happened so it doesn't happen again. Um, so you can either report that to team at openlifesci.org. That reaches all of the organizing team. That's myself, Berenice, Malvika, um, and Emmy. Or if there's a reason that you'd rather not approach us all as a group, then you can approach any of us individually. Um, this first name at openlifesci.org. And the info for those email addresses right now on the etherpad is lines 104 and 105. Um, hopefully we won't need to use that, um, but that's what to do if... You do need to. Um, so as mentioned, Otter. Right, the final thing um, that I will mention before we kick off, and I need to take a drink. I don't know if you can hear my voice is slowly giving out as I've been talking. Um, but we, when we have breakout rooms, they breakout rooms don't support using otter.ai, um, which means that there won't be transcription for the breakout rooms. So instead, what we do is we offer either spoken breakout rooms, or there's also the option to have a breakout room written. Um, and if you've never participated in a breakout room before, just um, as a 30 second recap, this is basically like dividing the call into tiny sub calls that have two or three or four members uh, for a short conversation and then bringing them back. So have a quick think about whether you would prefer to participate in a spoken breakout room or whether you prefer a written breakout room. Um, and then actually add W for written or S for spoken to the front of your name. 
Uh, so Emmy has already done this and demonstrated uh, written as has Jyoti. I'm just going to pause um, for just a moment. I'm going to ask everyone to use Zoom to try and edit your name to do this. Um, and if you've never changed your name on Zoom before, for me on my MacBook, what I need to do is I, need, I click on the participants list. Um, I, and then I go over to my name. I, I click on more um, and then I click on rename. If, it, if you're on a mobile, that may be slightly different. Um, and if you are unsure about what to do or stuck, uh, just let us know and we can walk you through it. Um, or you can try DMing uh, someone who's not speaking. So maybe Emmy or um, Berenice, if that would be easier, if you'd rather um, say that privately. I'm going to hold for just a moment more because I can see two or three names that don't have the S or the W in front. Um, Any questions so far, by the way? I, I've been talking a lot. <laughs> okay, most of us have the names edited. So thanks folks for doing that. Um, let me see, uh, we have the lightning round table. Right, okay, um, lightning round table. If you've been on a call with lots of participants, you know how long introductions can take. As joyful and amazing and incredible and exciting as it is to hear long introductions, sometimes when you've been listening to 23 people talk for five minutes each, by the end it's a bit like, I think I need to go and take a nap now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna ask people for four words, four words each. Um, and you will get my big thumbs up for getting exactly four words or at least four tiny phrases at the very most if you need two words sometimes. And these are name, location, project name, and hobby. Um, that is on line 116 if you want the reminder. Uh, but as an example for me, um, if I was to do this introduction, my name is Yo, my location is Cambridge, UK. My project name is absolutely open life science. Um, and my most recent hobby, I've been getting right back into cycling. Um, I hadn't been doing it so much before I got vaccinated, but right now I'm constantly have stiff muscles because I've been road biking a lot. That was too long. Do not emulate me. I should have just said cycling. <laughs> and what I'm going to do, I'm going to try and go based on the roll call um, and just ask everyone to introduce themselves in the same way. Um, it's fine to introduce yourselves by unmuting. If you prefer using the chat, use the chat instead. Either is fine. Uh, so next up is, is Berenice. So um, Berenice, I'm in Freiburg, Germany. Uh, next question, project name, definitely OLS. Uh, most recent will be calligraphy. That's all. Next one is Emmy. I am Emmy. Um, location, Amsterdam, Netherlands. Project still with OLS. And hobby, running after a long time. And then next we have, oh, Malvika, who is uh, on the tech. So I will pass to Jyoti. Sorry, name pronunciation. Yeah, hi, I'm Jyoti. I'm from India. My project is OLS and my hobby is, current hobby is yoga. Next up you. is Bruce, Burst, sorry. Hi. My name is Buche and I'm attending from Germany and my topic is uh, about data analysis on OLS survey data and my hobby is reading. Then I can pass to Emma. I think uh, that's me, sorry. <laughs> uh, Elisa. My, name, my name is Elisa. I'm in Amsterdam in the Netherlands. And uh, uh, my project is uh, about generic data stewards in the Netherlands. And um, my most recent hobby is playing violin. Uh, next up, I think we have um, Irena. OK, hi, everybody. Um, my name is Irena. I am located in Bielefeld, Germany. Um, my project here is um, online event, Women in Data Sciences I'm organizing, and um, my hobby is I love working in the garden. Just simply that. <laughs> Thank you. So next one would be Ludia. 
Hi, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm I'm Lydia. Um, I'm from um, Oxford, and I'm in the uh, OLS project. Um, and uh, one of my hobbies is um, performing comedy. Um, Michael, next. Hello, my name is Michael Adi. I'm from Ghana. My project is about an open database, um, carbon footprinting, and um, my hobby, music, listening to music. Next is Manuel. Hi, yeah, my name is Manu, and my project is, uh, is called Gene Story. And, uh, and then, um, Oh, yeah, I'm in Paris in France and uh, my hobby is uh, hiking and I just don't know where you find the order of the names so I will leave it to someone else to say who's next. I think we might have accidentally skipped Lizanna so Lizanna over to you um, and let's try use the roll call. Um, we're right now at about mm, I'm gonna say 54 although it's gotten a bit squishy. Okay, so I hope I'll find the next one then. Um, so yeah, I'm Lizanna um, in, in Heidelberg, Germany. Uh, the project name is BioIT and I'm into poems writing. Um, and then to find the next one. So is it Ariel then? Am I doing let's it? Go with let's go with Ariel. <laughs> that, that'll work. Hi, I'm Ariel. Uh, I am located in Hertfordshire in the United Kingdom. Um, I'm an OLS uh, for mentor and I am another keen gardener. Um, and I believe the next person is Emma. Thanks, Ariel, because I've been missed. <laughs> I'm Emma. Um, I'm in the UK in Portsmouth on the South Coast. Um, I'm an OLS mentor for Adele. Um, and what was the other thing a hobby um well gardening tidying my garden at the moment because it's like a jungle still um and the next person i think is sarah hopefully i've said your name right hi yes i'm sarah i'm in london based in london uh, my project is in OLS in about doing a tutorial in sequencing analysis and my main hobbies are yoga and hiking i'm sorry i don't know who's next I think next up is Florence. Hello, uh, yeah, my name is Florence. I'm based in Warwick in the UK. Um, my project is um, environmental map data mapping um, and most recent hobby is crocheting. Um, and I think it's Luke Hare next. Hi, thanks Florence. Um, my name is Luke. I am based in London. Uh, the project that I'm working on is called Hub 23, and my main hobby is uh, playing football. And sorry, I think uh, Saranjit is next. Hi, my name is Saranjit. I'm based in India. My project is about building the RAC Asia community, and my hobbies are cycling, gardening, and doodling. Um, I'm not aware who, who should be next. No worries. I think next is Adele. Yeah, I think it's me. Uh, hello, I'm Adele. I'm in Barcelona or near Barcelona, Spain, and my project's name is Balconnect. And my most recent hobby is to learn how to teach a four-year-old to swim. Nadine? Uh, hello, um, I'm in Brighton in the United Kingdom and my project is about um, writing a Python library for measures of complexity and emergence and um, one of my most recent hobbies is climbing I think I've been doing it for two years already but with really huge breaks in between so now I'm really starting to do it again. And I also don't know who's next. I'm confused about that. 
Next up, line 64 on the etherpad, we have Diego. Hi, I'm Diego. I'm from Argentina. And my project is uh, open data for nanosystem synthesis experimental conditions. I'm trying to gather some information in one place and try to make uh, more easy for other people who work with uh, synthesis of nanosystems. Um, my most recent hobby is uh, reading now. I'm uh, getting into science fiction. So uh, I think Alejandro is the next one. Hi everyone, thank you to you. I'm Alejandro, I'm based in London at the Alan Turing. And my project is about uh, trying to provide demonstrators for the environmental science. And with the, with the name is the Environmental AI Group. And my hobby are cycling and also music. Like, like I love uh, listening to different kind of music. So that's it. I guess the next also I am <laughs> the next part. You can me. Thank you. Uh, you cut out a little bit, Alejandro. So I'm just going to, um, so I think next up is Ali. Yeah. Hi, guys. Um, I'm Ali. I'm from London in the UK. I'm an OLS mentee. Uh, the project I'm working on is around building a community health report, but trying to find a legal metric to it as well. And my hobby is playing football. I think I'm amazing. So. I think is is there anyone that we missed out that would like to do an introduction? Because the audio definitely got very squishy. Okay, I'm gonna take that as we've probably introduced everyone. Um, on the off chance we've missed anyone, I'm really sorry. Please definitely either speak up or pop an intro in the chat. That's also great as well. Um, but with that, thank you everyone for sticking to reasonably short intros. I think we did that really well and in record time. Um, next up is welcome to OLS. So um, this is me doing a short presentation. Let me just do the sharing screen thing. Share screen. Um, I'm going to share all of desktop too and hope nothing too embarrassing comes up. Click share. Right, and now if I click present, are we in presentation mode? I've got nods. OK, this is delightful. I love it when it works. Right. Welcome, everyone. This is OLS4. And we have welcome in as many languages as we can manage. If yours is missing, let us know. We can get it in there. So we've briefly sort of introduced um, ourselves as the OLS um, founders and organizers. Um, but just again, to quickly go over, there are four of us. There's Bernice Batu. There's myself. Yo Yehudi, there's Movika Sharan and Emit Zhang. Um, so you should see us around a lot. We will do a lot of talking, um, but we also like listening to you and interacting with you as well. Um, and what we believe is that for science to be really, really effective, um, then it needs to be shared openly with others and made freely available. Um, this is talking about building on each other's shoulders rather than um, competing. So, you are here with us. We are delighted to have you here with us today. Um, one second, I'm just gonna get rid of that. Sorry, fighting notifications that I'm hoping aren't coming up on the screen. Right. Okay, so our goal as Open Life Site. No, there's still more. Sorry, this is really annoying. I've got a window that's just bothering me. Okay, right, back to it. Apologies. Open Life Science Program helps early stage researchers and potential academic leaders in becoming open science ambassadors. Um, so that is that what we really want to do to actually help you out to get um, is, is to, to apply open science, not only in your own work, but longer term as well. So it might be that the skills that you learn don't necessarily get applied to your project right now, or maybe that they do, but also that it's a toolkit that you can use later on and that you can teach to other people. Um, and this is really important because we believe that science can't advance so long as we are actually um, competing for resources. And it's going to be a lot more effective if we actually collaborate on things instead. Um, 
The problem is, um, and many of you may have already encountered, is that researchers are often really skeptical about sharing their work. They're worried that they might be criticized if they share something or maybe that they will get scooped. Um, so the question that we try and address as part of the next few cohort call meetings is um, how can we work in an open way without being vulnerable um, and actually treating openness as a strength rather than something that can potentially be um, a challenge or a problem. Um, so we explore these areas, um, we explore them and part of the reason that we have this long 16 week program is so that when we um, learn about a topic and we discuss topics that you then have time to actually apply them to your project um, and get a really in depth feeling about what's going on. Um, we need to update that, that says 15. It's 15 weeks of um, cohort presentations and then the last, the 16th week is the actual final presentation. So it's not wrong, but 15 or 16, all good. Um, we have the combination of cohort-based training, which will be things like today. And then we have in between weeks, we have one-on-one -on -one mentoring, as well as like we mentioned that hands-on application where you're working on a project and you're actually applying it to the things that you're working on as well. Um, so one thing that's really strong that you will see, especially in some of our early cohort calls, is um, Mozilla's open leadership framework. So open life science is actually born out of a previous, um, out of a previous program, which uh, was managed by Mozilla, um, and then we sort of spun out of that. And so we've reused a lot of the materials, including the framework that they have which um, actually is designed to help uh, guide people further through uh, leading open online projects. Uh, so this link is great. Um, any, all of the Mozilla materials are really good resources um, and would highly recommend spending time looking through it. You will also see tables coming up occasionally where we talk about um, different aspects of Mozilla's open leadership framework. Um, this is another sentence you will see a lot and we highlight different parts of the sentence every time depending on what we're teaching. Um, but summing up, it would be open leaders design, build and empower their projects and communities um, so that people can understand, share, participate and feel included in these projects. Um, and here we go. This is the open leadership framework. Uh, you will see this highlighted at various different times. Um, we, will, we will cover different aspects of these boxes about whether you're designing for understanding, whether you're designing for sharing or whether you're designing for participation and inclusion. Um, and so on. Um, we will highlight this a lot of times as we go on, so I won't go into it too much in depth right now. Um, and so my next question, what is open science? So these are some of the things that open science can be. Um, if anyone has thoughts about it, please add them in the chat. We'd love to see what your thoughts about what open science means. Um, some of the aspects might be sharing your data. Another one might be sharing code if the project that you're working on actually has code that's associated with it. Um, hardware. So science isn't only about code, it's also about hardware, it's about so many other things. Um, sharing your papers, your protocols, actually sharing the written outputs is open access. Um, if you share them early, it's a preprint um, before peer review. Um, sharing reviews, open reviews is another aspect of open science. Um, training and actually enabling people to do more of the science is also another aspect of open science. Another one that I particularly love um, is citizen science. So this is um, another phrase might be participatory science where the people who are involved um, as the subjects of the data or who'll be affected by it are actually, actually also involved in the data gathering and the experimental design um, of the science. Um, and networking is another important part of open science because if it's open, um, you wanna be sharing it and you wanna make sure that it's easy for other people to use and take advantage of. Um, and a concept that's really important in OLS is open by design. Um, and this is in contrast to being open by default. Um, so I'll dig into what this means a little bit more. Um, so looking at a, a study that's astonishingly nearly 10 years old now, um, but a study from 2012 um, looking at 160 tech companies found that um, the, le the level of strategic intent and openness correlated with market performance. Um, and as an academic, I sort of think, well, this sounds very industry techie, um, but, but the, the message here is that when you intentionally design things around openness, it tends to be much more successful than if you just happen to be open. Um, so think of this maybe as a difference between saying anyone can use it if they wish um, and intentionally designing and developing pathways 
um, and ways for people to use and to contribute um, and to enhance um, what you're working on. Um, so just to, to, to re-summarize that, it, the intent is to design openness into your work rather than letting it be a thoughtless default. Um, and so, yeah, our, our goal is that using leadership and vision combined with one-on-one -on -one mentoring that actually applies to your individual projects, uh, that you can achieve positive culture change in your community, in your institute, um, maybe in your research group, maybe wider. Um, so I think those are all of my slides. It is, so I'll stop sharing, click on the stop share. Okie dokie. Um, what's next? I shall open up the etherpad. Emmy. I have it. Um, yeah. yeah, so if you have any questions to Yo's wonderful, wonderfully succinct introduction, I guess we can also leave that. You can also leave that in the Zoom or in the etherpad. We're on about to head into line 128, but there's a little question bit on 122. Um, anyway. Next, I have uh, the pleasure of introducing a very important element that we'll use again and again in the next calls of OLS, uh, the breakout rooms. So Yo has already very hopefully alluded to this, um, but breakout rooms are a Zoom feature and also an OLS feature. Um, the aim is to give everyone a chance to talk or write or share their thoughts in the smaller group. Um, so what will happen logistically is that um, in a while when we're all ready the breakout rooms will be opened and you'll see this little pop-up on zoom which will say you've been assigned to breakout room or something like that breakout room one or breakout room seven and it asks you to enter so once you click that pop-up then you'll be leaving this main room with a lot of squares to a smaller room with fewer squares with other people um, and you'd be able to have a more um, I guess, intimate conversation and discussion there. Um, so what we usually do is, um, first of all, uh, as, we all, as we already asked you all to rename yourself, you already know that we have spoken or written breakout rooms. So these are for spoken or written discussions. Um, you'll know whether you're in a spoken or written room prior to joining the room. Um, and I think it's often um, also either in the notes or somewhere in the name of the breakout room itself. So in a spoke, spoken breakout room, you can speak and listen um, to other people in their room speaking and have, a, have an exchange that way. And in a written room, um, there will be sections on the notes uh, where you can leave your uh, thoughts uh, in a written manner or use the Zoom chat. I think that's still the case, yes. So the Zoom chat is not public in that sense. It's then only visible to people who were in your room. Um, if you need help in your breakout room, there is a ask for help button on the bottom of your Zoom screen. So you can press that and one of us will be alerted and will come and, you know, help you solve the problem, hopefully. So the other thing about breakout rooms is we always have sort of discussion questions or prompts. So for this particular breakout room that we're going to try in about two minutes when I finish talking, uh, these prompts are, we, we would like you to discuss what was your path into open life science, this program? How did you get into working openly or interested into working openly? And then how has working open affected your leadership so far? So have a think about this, share your experience and thoughts with um, the other two people in your breakout room. So I think we're three people per room um, for this breakout and you'll have around 10 minutes. Um, please try and have sort of equal amount of time that you speak between the three of us in this, three of you in this case. So about three minutes per person, I would say. Um, and we'll send a reminder when we're close to closing the rooms. I hope I've covered everything. Did, did, it, did that make sense? Put in the chat or like unmute if you ask, if you have questions. I see a very nice thumbs up from Irena, thank you. <laughs> If we don't have questions, we shall start. Um, Yo, are we ready with the rooms? Yes, your introduction neatly gave me plenty of time. All right, I'm going to open up the rooms, folks. And we have, uh, I'm gonna say 12 minutes. Um, and there should be a timer on the top of the room. 
and good luck folks have fun we will see you again soon Everything okay, Saranji? Okay. Um, if I, I don't know if you can hear us, just in case, if there's anything um, we can do, um, please feel free to unmute or um, put it in chat. Did you set the timer? Yeah, sorry. Okay, thanks. Uh, you also. Uh, um, introducing the open canvas. So after the breakout room, so I would share my screen. Sorry. Um, <laughs> Um, issue with the different too many screens too many things open already you have my sympathies I got panicked that the wrong um, screen was sharing <laughs> and that my any work emails were showing earlier I, I hope they weren't <laughs> can you see just the open canvas stuff there okay perfect. The oh, okay perfect <laughs> So um, now I would, we present you the open canvas to develop a project strategy. So uh, what we will do is uh, we will use open canvas to think to open project strategy. So we will show you uh, these tools that can help you to, to build your, your, your projects and look at examples with, without the S. I think it would be one, on just one example. Um, and then um, afterwards, so once I, I will have present that, uh, one of the assignments that you will have to do at the end of this course will be to use this open canvas for your project to help you uh, structure and thinking about your project. Uh, we will share with you the resources for that. Um, so you already presented the open leader leadership framework. And so today, so now, not today, now I will just discuss about and she also mentioned that we will highlight part of this sentence, so open leaders design. And I will focus now on the design aspect and build a project that offer authors to collaborate within inclusive communities. So we will discuss now about the design aspect. Um, and in the open leadership framework, so you have these, uh, these tables that uh, show you the different aspects. So how to design your project for understanding, sharing, participation, and inclusion. And we will focus on the first row, which is yeah, this first on design and how to, to design for, for these two, three aspects. Um, and one tool that can be useful for you to, to really go and design for the three aspects is to use the open canvas. Uh, the open canvas um, has been adapted by, I think it's really by the Mozilla Foundation. I'm not sure if there is something in, the, uh, in between. Uh, from the Lean Canvas to develop a project, uh, but mostly for, for um, industry projects. Um, and so they developed the Open Canvas for open source projects. Um, and the idea of the Open Canvas is you have this canvas with different, um, with different boxes. Each box is, uh, relate to something, the problem, solution, metrics, resources, etc. And you can I will explain step by step the, the different uh, boxes. It's just first to give you an overview of this tool. Um, but yeah, the, the open canvas looks like this, like these big tables. Um, and then it has, um, I will work through. So you have two aspects on the open canvas. On the left, the project itself, and on the right, the community. 
because it's really important to, to think and plan and design uh, how you will bridge your community. And it's really as important as it, as it is as planning your, how to build your project. So it's, this open canvas is really great to really highlight these two aspects of your project, the project in one side and the community and how they are interconnected. Um, so when you, um, you need to fill this open canvas, you go through the, di the different steps that I will show you now. So you start by the problem and you try to highlight when you fail this open canvas to fill the top one or two th or three problems that you want to solve with your project. Then on the second step, so you start to fill what's your proposed solution for each of the problems. And you fill these boxes, the solution boxes. What how you will measure the success is the, th the third boxes that you need to fill. Um, then what you need to do that, to, to, to build the minimum viable project for that. So do you need uh, design? Do you need development? Do you need experts? Do you need, uh, do, what are the costs there? Um, do you need hardware? What do you need for your project? And then we are done with the really product aspect. So the left side, which focus on the product. And then we move to the community. Um, and then the first things you need to fill um, is what are the contributor profiles? So which contributor you would like to have that will uh, interact with you with your open uh, in your open project to help you building, for example, your product. What are the type of contribution do you expect? Uh, the ideal contributors. Um, then, so it will help you to, to, to really build this, uh, this aspect of the project execution. So what do you need to make your project, your product, um, your project working? Uh, your contributor profile and the resources that you need. Um, then, once you know what are the contributors, what are the users of your project? Um, um, what is your target audience? Who will be the early adopters of your project? Um, for who you are uh, building this for, et cetera. So all these questions then. And then how do you reach the people? Then how do you reach the contributors? How you will gain the new contributors that will contribute to your project? And then for users, how do you, will you gain new users, uh, people that use your project and how do you reach them? So it's all this part of the community engagement um, and contributors yeah, is really just, so you have both, you have contributors and users of your project. So you need to think about these two, these two the two part of the community. And then uh, once you, you, you filled all these boxes, you, it will be more easy to fill this unique value proposition. So a clear message that says what you will offer and why you are different. Um, I really like the open canvas when I have a new project because it's really forced me to see, think about that, about my project and, and try to build it and make it more that I can really more talk about that project in a more structured way. Um, here is one example of the, the, how the, uh, the, this open canvas was filled for a project that is called contribution, uh, contribution uh, badges for science, where the idea is to, 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 to provide badges for people that contribute in different projects. And you can see how they fill this project. So it's not one of our projects I want to change. So we need to change that to put more example and maybe one example on OLS would be nice. So how we build this open Canva there, or uh, one of your projects, then we could share that later. But it's, I think it's interesting for you to, to think about that to, to help you building your open Canva there as having a different example there. Um, if you want to build, so, as, a, as an assignment, I said uh, it would be nice if you could if you could fill the open canvas for your project currently. Um, we give you a link to the open canvas. It's also uh, in the notes, and uh, you can you should make a copy of the document. Uh, I can probably open the document, but it's exactly okay. Not link on that, but yeah. Um, 
you open that, it will be a, uh, a Google Sheet. Uh, make a copy of the documents on your own Google Drive or download the images and fill that uh, for you. And then you will share that uh, with others uh, in the in the course later that you can uh, exchange on the different uh, canvas from different projects and also have a no an overview of the different projects. Um, and so, yeah, thank you on that. So it's a really short introduction to the open canvas. And so if you have any question, please, Feel free to ask them in the in the in the oh, in the other parts. Um, and otherwise, I think I will end into you again. Oh, if you have any question now, feel free to yeah mute quickly so we can we maybe have one time for one question maybe. I'm sure. If not, you, do you want to continue? Absolutely. Um, so do look at the open canvas folks, even if it feels like a form filling exercise, um, it tends to really help you think through in a structured way, uh, what your project is gonna be achieving and how you're gonna get there. Um, well, I'll say bye to Ariel, but I think she's already hopped off. Um, so folks, um, now that we've talked a bit about working on um, defining your vision um, using the open canvas, the next thing we'll talk about is um, talking about your own mission and vision with someone else. So we're going to break into breakout rooms with two people. Um, Emmy right now in the background is doing a fantastic job of, is, is Emmy still here? Oh yeah, okay. Is doing a fantastic job of um, sorting out breakout rooms. Uh, this should be roughly two people. Um, occasionally, if we don't have an even number, we might have to put three in one room. Um, but the idea is that you'll get one on one ability to quickly tell tell the person um, who's in your room what your big idea is um, and then um, swap and do the other and if you have a little bit of time you may want to ask questions about it to clarify certain areas and it may be that you're thinking about what what things what resources you'll need and what you'll be addressing will have been informed a little bit just by thinking about some of the fields in the open canvas as well um, so for this we have 10 minutes that means that we have roughly um, five minutes per person. We'll try and send you a warning at, um, at five minutes and say, hey, folks, it's time to swap over. Um, Emmy, how are we getting on with the breakout rooms? All good, I think. OK. Um, in that case, is, is the job clear for these breakouts? Can I have some thumbs up if yes? I've got thumbs. Okay, cool. Again, if you ever get stuck for any reason, leave the breakout room and come to the main room or use the um, request help function in Zoom. Um, but Emmy, uh, send everyone free and um, discuss your big ideas. We'll start recording. There we go. So we have 32 seconds. And a couple of groups who are still engaged in conversation. You just know it's riveting, like really riveting when they come back and they're halfway through a word when it finally comes back. Um, 17. Um, I'm going to very quickly ask um, oh, if anyone has any thoughts that you'd like to like add as notes or anything in the um, doc, please do. Like maybe just an interesting inspiration or idea or realization that popped through while you were chatting. Uh, we are all back. I believe we're all back. Um, so in that case, uh, Emmy, do you want to, to start talking about road mapping? I will. Welcome back. So this, I know you've had quite a lot of things today already, so I'm going to keep this relatively short um, and hopefully um, you can all see my screen by this point. Perfect, thank you. Um, so yeah, we'll talk about road mapping for open projects as a last thing. Um, I'm sure all of you, some of you may have had some sort of understanding or experience with road mapping for projects. I wanna highlight what's different for open projects. What we'll do is we'll uh, discover together how we use a roadmap to plan for uh, work and contribution 
that's important, uh, on your open projects that you're all going to work on for the next 16 weeks and beyond. And then look at some examples um, that you probably do in your own time, but we'll have a couple of links to good examples. And then there will be an assignment where you will work together with your mentor to create sort of a verse version of your roadmap. So um, just to reiterate uh, what Yo and Bernice has already mentioned in previous presentations, um, this is part of that sentence that we had. Um, we're really here talking about the roadmap is a tool for you to design and build projects that will empower others to collaborate. I think that's what distinguishes for me roadmap, normal roadmap versus open roadmaps is the ability for that roadmap to empower others to collaborate within inclusive communities of your project. So um, going back to that grid, we're here talking about designing for participation and inclusion specifically. So really thinking about intentional strategies of um, how do you make decisions, for example, as a community, how, what types of interactions do you want to facilitate within your community? Um, and what is the identity of the project? And all of these could be highlighted and delineated using a roadmap. So first of all, welcoming spaces. Um, having a roadmap upfront and available and visible to everyone just makes a good and first impression so that, you know, if you're a new person coming you know, browsing on the internet or coming across a GitHub page and you see a project, it's a welcoming roadmap, a clear um, map of what's happening and what's going to happen. It just gives a good impression so that you are, you know that you're in the right place. You know how you can get involved in the project and yeah, you know what's gonna happen now and in the future. So to do that, there are a couple of elements that needs to be in the roadmap. So first of all, a project summary and welcome. And then uh, in, in, sorry, directions on how to get involved, or ways to get involved, and finally a timeline. So I'm gonna go through all of these in a, more, in a bit more detail. So first of all, you have a project summary and welcome. Um, this will help orient visitors to your project. It's important to help them to understand where they are. So come onto Open Life Science GitHub page, uh, shameless plug there, and you'll know that you're on the Open Life Science roadmap where this is all about Open Life Science. Um, and then a little summary to help others understand um, what the focus of the rest of that roadmap is. And then the second element is how to get involved. So let's say your welcome, your, your creation of a welcoming space and your introduction has got new contributors quite excited. And of course they want to know how they can help, how they can contribute. So it's really nice to, on the roadmap, point out parts of the project that they can immediately work on um, and point to key documentation that they should definitely check out as a new contributor to get their heads around where, who is who and where is what, et cetera. And then last but not least, the timeline, which is really the star of the roadmap. So um, just very quickly, but we're gonna dive into this in a bit more detail in week four. Um, the timeline helps you organize tasks um, so that you can complete your projects around miles, specific milestones that you'd set up, hopefully together with your community. Um, and it maps what you're working on now and where you're going next. So that's the map part of it, right? It's that you know, now we're working on this milestone A and then we'll have task one, two, three, and four to build towards milestone B. So people will easily know that, okay, now you're on milestone A, for example. Um, milestones are significant turning points or events that will help move the project forward. So these could be, if you're working on a software project, for example, feature releases, like the release of a new feature um, or a minimal viable product or an MVP. Um, it could be events. So if you're organizing a gathering or a hackathon or a, a sprint, then those could also be um, milestones. And then finally timeframes. Uh, so it could be short term, you know, in the next month in, or well, it depends really on the, on the scale of your overall project. But so let's say you have a two year project, then short term milestones could be things in the next month or two. Medium term is the next six months to a year. Long term is all the way to the end. So milestones will have different timeframes. 
So what we like to you to do uh, as part of your assignments, well, it's just to pick one to three milestones for your timeline. Um, and hopefully one of these or more of these will lie within the next 16 weeks as well, so that you could, you know, discuss with your mentors and reach your milestones together. Once you've broken down sort of your bigger roadmap into milestones, then you can further break it down to tasks. So think about, for example, I have a milestone to organize a hackathon. What are the tasks that I need to complete in order to reach that milestone? You should include information with each of the tasks to make it easy for contributors. So let's say, first thing about organizing hackathon, choose a venue. Then how can people contribute to choosing that venue? What sort of, where are you having these discussions about these things? What are your choices? How are you going to document these discussions? All of these things can be broken down to tasks that you need, or you or other contributors will need to do. Um, what does success look like? So in this case, I would have successfully picked a good venue, <laughs> um, pointers to get started, and then also why this is important, just to reinforce your overall project vision. Um, so as I was saying, um, this really roadmap for an open project is really a tool to also bring visibility and you know public understanding for your project. So I think this is, for me, Yes, important to store the roadmap, but also just to have it in a visible and accessible way. So um, there are different ways that you could do this. For example, um, one that I love and used a lot is to have just a separate file that is called roadmap.md if you're a fan of Markdown or it could be um, TXT for text files. Um, you could put it in a readme file, uh, which is the introduction file uh, of your, uh, often of your software GitHub repo. We'll talk a lot about, more about that in week four um, in a GitHub issue. Again, this is a GitHub feature, but um, issues have this nice like check boxes that you can check off when things are getting done. Um, there are two sort of examples. When you, if you go back to these slides afterwards, you can click on those links and you'll see the nice examples from, of course, ourselves on how that could be done. Um, and or in a projects tab in GitHub. And there are many other ways to be honest, but these are some of the ones that we love because they're nice and public and open source. So come back to this afterwards when you're working on your roadmap and check out some of these examples that are in the green underlined links on this slide. That's it. Um, we hope that your roadmap will help you achieve your open science dreams. Any questions, immediate thoughts? Um, I'm just going over to the chat now, not seeing much. And I think if you have any questions, feel free to put it under line 274 under notes, or you can also just unmute um, directly now. I see Manuel has a question. Do you want to unmute and ask? Yeah, so I, I just wanted to ask uh, how to approach the um, the contributions for a project in which, for example, the users of the, of the software will not necessarily be developers. Because I know for many open, open source projects, the developer and the user is the same person. But for example, for a website for biologists, very likely many of them don't know how to code. Many of them know a bit and would like to contribute. But you would also expect contribution for some software developer professional who's not a user. So. In something like this, how would you approach the, the this section on contribution? I love that question. I'm, I love that you're already thinking about contributors, contributions from non-coders, um, which is really important for most of our projects here in Open Life Science. Um, I'm gonna leave a lot of this to, I think probably Yo, Bernice and Malvika will have a lot to say about this. I'm gonna say on the road mapping aspect, um, there must be, there should be specific phases where you'd be looking for that feedback from um, non-coders, so user testing or ideation phases where you want to gather a group of users to try and figure out, you know, how can whatever you're trying a feature or whatever you're trying to develop could help them um, achieve their goals. So have very defined milestones that are centered around non-code contributions could be one of the ways to do this. And I'll stop and let our other co-organizers add on top of that. And others as well, if you want to chime in. 
I'll quickly volunteer some of my thoughts. Um, so like, like Emmy said, thinking about tasks that don't require code or that maybe don't require biology, but do require code um, are good. Um, but I, I try and almost like make buckets. And so I say like, here are tasks that are not code tasks. Here are car tasks that do require a biologist. And here are tasks that um, like, maybe it's documentation, maybe it's design, and like Emmy mentioned, um, testing. But um, we'll, we'll talk about this a bit further later on um, about using GitHub to share different tasks. Um, but I, I use labels. So I might have bright pink being um, non-coder um, and you know bright blue being biology knowledge required. Um, so it's really easy for people to immediately spot stuff that works for them. Malvika, I know you want to say thing. No, I took my hands down because I, I think what you just said about labeling each task with what skills are required rather than separating as coder and non-coder. I think the idea should be that you don't you don't separate these tasks because they are not separable in the sense that people should be able to collaborate and contribute wherever they can. So you can think about exactly what you were saying, that can you label each task with specific kind of knowledge that people might need. If you are able to even provide the duration it might require to do certain tasks, but I added in the chat that we will revisit this in, in a cohort call, I think two or three weeks down the line where you will be thinking about this more deeply. So for now, just focus on the milestones. Maybe you don't need to break them down into these kind of detailed task list. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Manuel, for asking. Um, other folks, last questions before I hand over to Bernice. I will hand over to Bernice for the close. Thank you, Amy. And it's already the end of the first cohort call, it seems already. Um, Interesting, it was nice to, to see all of you. Just a quick reminder before us, before we, we really uh, finish. So make sure you have been added to the OLS4 mailing list. If it's not the case, please let us know that we can add you to the mailing list. Um, you should have also have been added to, you should have received the Google Calendar uh, invitation for the different cohort code. So if it's not the case, please let us know. And you should have been added to the Slack uh, space. If it's not the case, let us know again. <laughs> and, and please join the, uh, the OLS4 cohort uh, channel on Slack where you can, we will post things there, reminders about the different cohorts, about the different things that will happen and where you can discuss all together also. Um, otherwise, um, we mentioned that also in one of the mails that we offer uh, microgrants. So if you need uh, if you need some uh, a bit of money to be sure that you can attend uh, the, the, the this cohort, for example, if you need new headsets, if you need uh, some um, uh, 4G uh, to get a better connection, uh, if you need something like this, please. Um, so you just started the link to the, the um, a post that explained the microgrants. So if you think, please check that and reach us to ask for the microgrants. We will we will uh, make sure that we can offer that for you. Um, discuss all together on Slack. So Slack is done for that. So it's usually you have quite a lot of people. Please introduce yourself in the introduce introduction uh, channel if you want. Um, yeah, it's, it's a nice, usually there is always things going on. There is events that are from the community that are made interesting for you. There is um, job advertisement sometimes that happen there. Uh, even so nice events, nice, um, have nice links happening. So I just recommend you to, to join the OLS for uh, OLS uh, <laughs> space. It's quite nice. There is always, there is nice discussion going on there. Um, next thing is usually we so we have a name usually for each of the courts. So the first court was named uh, Open Seed. Uh, the second one was the Mask Court because it started one year ago. So when we always all of, all of us were already wearing masks. Uh, last 
quote so was perseverance because I think it's when perseverance landing in Mars on Mars. Um, what would be the next is the name for OLS4? You pick. So please um, suggest names. Uh, you can suggest names directly in the notes for so online uh, 183 or on the Slack channels, and we will gather all the names and we will ask you to vote that uh, later. So either now, uh, either here or in the next court call. Um, and a few uh, assignments for you uh, before you meet your mentors next week. So it would be good. So please open an issue on the OLS4 GitHub repository. Um, it's linked in the document. Uh, you will have a quick uh, explanation on how you, you can do that and directly in the in the github uh, if it's not if you don't know and you really need help we can we can spend some time now to, after the now to explain you how to do that so if you if you need some help to to open an issue on github please stay on the call and we will show you um do there is a, we have a small exercise for you also so reflecting on your world as a monkey so please uh follow this ex small exercise, it should be quite quick, but then it's a good exercise for you to know what is your role and how do you do really relate to that. Um, we have a compare and contrast assignment where you, you can uh, think about the current and desired community interaction and value exchange. So uh, it's a nice exercise to do also. Uh, start to work on your open canvas, so create a copy of the open canvas. Um, and then you can start filling that, and then you can discuss next week with your mentors uh, how to fill this document or uh, how you will want you will do that. Um, and then you can share a link or image of the open canvas on your GitHub issue that you just opened. Um, then people can give other participants of the code can give you feedback. You can also discuss on Slack directly if you want. Uh, about the different open canvas. And, and you can also start your roadmap. I know it's a lot of things. Uh, and the first weeks usually are a lot of possible assignments. Just to give you, it's just recommendation. We don't force you to do all the assignments. It can be a bit feeling a bit overwhelming at the beginning, but it's just to help you to some resources that can be useful for your project. Uh, nothing is mandatory. It's, um, yeah, it's things you could do um, to help also the discussion with your mentor building your project. Um, and I, did I forget? It will get better with the time on OLS4. There is less and less assignment over the weeks, just to let you know. The first week seems a lot especially when you need to get familiar with all the different things. So with the, where to find the good information when the things. Um, usually also um, a lot of the information are available on the website. And one thing I forgot to also say that we need to forget, please check on the website uh, that your project is well uh, explained. So we, are, we put already all the projects on the website. So please check them um, if, you, if you have a bit of time then. And give, tell us if it's, something is wrong then. I, did I forget I think anything? I think. Mm. I think we're good, just feedback. Ah, yeah, true. Um, but I also see that there is also one point on the next call. So the next call next week, you will have a call with your mentor. And there is another a similar call as today for the people that couldn't join this one. So to be sure, so it's not, if you are there, you don't have to attend the, the one next week. It's more to be sure that you are welcome to join, but you are not, uh, it's not monetary at all. Um, and the next court call will be in two weeks then. And we will discuss about tool and world mapping for open uh, projects. And in week four, in week five, there will be an optional introduction to GitHub. Um, if you have any questions, please, please add them in the notes, so in line uh, 30309. And uh, starting from line 312, there is some feedback. So if you could give us some feedback there. So we have four questions. So what worked, what didn't work, 
what you will change and what surprised you. And at the end of all the different uh, um, calls, we will always ask you this three, these four questions. It's a good way for us to get feedback uh, on how we can improve the, the different calls afterwards um, for the next course, or even during the course, how we can adapt to, to you and to the need there. And I think it's the last things I need to say. And otherwise, really, it's amazing to see all of you there. And thanks for joining. And thanks for being part of OLS. And yeah, thanks, everybody. And see you soon. Thank you all.